for the Education Library Board. Families and children. It's like a branch of social work, but in, in education. Um, I'm just in the process of retiring from. Frankly. So, but as I say, after a while, I just kind of thought what I really wanted to do was write. So it kind of took me back into it again. Yeah, I was really kind of concentrating on my career, you know, yeah. and I applied for a promotion uh -huh. and didn't get it, and I was really uh -huh. disappointed because okay. I thought it was my job, mm -hmm. you know. So I kind of had a reappraisal of things at that point and thought, well, I wanted to write, so okay. I put my energy into that instead of kind of... I never went for another promotion no. after that, I just stayed where I was. It's like, you know the way people sometimes say things happen for a reason, you know? Mm -hmm. And I absolutely think that if I'd got that promotion, I still would have been in that kind of, you know, that track, yeah. whereas that just... Uh -huh. Be on the right track, really. Yeah. Uh -huh. Miss yeah. Johnson, you absolutely adore. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. Brilliant. Yeah. I love doing that. Yeah. A lot of readings and traveling and stuff as a result. You know, so that's well. I've also, I mean, I've had readings in, you know, New York, oh, Montreal, right. uh, Budapest, Paris. You know, so it's kind of taken me to places that. Uh, Oh, brilliant. I wouldn't necessarily have gone to otherwise, no. you know. So. I'm, only, I'm only doing one event in the fest. I would have done stuff along with the farriers and the bangers ghosts and that kind of thing, you know. And the uh, Copeland Island picnic. Uh, Women oh, Alive, yeah. Is that, is that I'm, well, I'm sort of peripherally involved in it, but yeah, yeah it's sort of kind of the woman called Jane Talbot has started that. And okay. Seems to be doing good things for right, okay. women, women's voices. Kind of. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah, Very yeah, good. About time. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I got really interested in the 18th century and the kind of, you know, the age of reason and the kind of okay. all the scientific stuff. So there's a lot of that around. So, you know, each book can tend to be about a different kind of thing. Right. Or, it's yeah, kind of themed. Then. Different focus, maybe. Yeah. yeah. All right. Great. Yeah. Last night, I kind of a large part of that Miracle Fruit book was based around um, this guy called John Hunter, who was an 18th century surgeon. Uh -huh. And I went over to um, to London to the Hunter. It started off that um, I'd heard about the Great Irish Giant, who was this guy from the north who exhibited himself in London. Mm -hmm. um, he was he, he had giantism and um, he went to London to exhibit himself and he became ill and he was drinking too much and John Hunter wanted his body to for him yeah, for like medical for, yeah, yeah sure. and he didn't want his body to Not be yeah. yeah so he paid his friends to take his body after he died and uh, give him a sea burial and they went to a in on the way to the coast and John Hunter followed them and got them drunk and persuaded them to sell him the Irish giant's body. Uh -huh. Still the skeleton is still in John Hunter's museum in the Hunterian in London. So I went yeah. over to see it and then just became totally fascinated by this guy John Hunter and the right. story you know, the story all around him. So that kind of medical right. Wow. Anatomy stuff is I find you like it very fascinating. Yeah, it, so. Is that is that something do you become obsessed? Once you like there's a couple of stories you've told me and it's all come from this one kind of route. Yeah. Where you've heard a story yeah. and uh -huh. and then you kinda of start to look at that yeah. and everything branches yeah. out from that. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. It's all eighteenth century. That stuff all what well, yeah, I mean, I just find the eighteenth century really a fascinating. Yeah. Time, that whole kind of the birth of science. Okay. And, yeah. Um, uh, skeleton of the Great Irish Giant, conceived on the very top of a very high haystack in Littlebridge, County Derry, by his stout, strong-voiced mother and his average-sized father, Charles Byrne grew like a cornstalk and was the talk of London for years. Could be seen at the sign of the Hampshire Hog for half a crown or one shilling for children and servants in livery. He too had a voice that sounded like thunder, but his appearance was far from wholesome. He constantly dribbled and spat. Out of fashion, his savings stolen, his limbs always aching and his drinking killing him surely, the surgeons gathered around the house where he lay like harpooners round a whale. How he feared their hunger for him. When he died, 
the fisherman he had employed to sink his leaded body twenty fathoms down and out of reach, succumbed to the bribes, handed the huge corpse over for five hundred pounds. In his Earl's Court menagerie laboratory, John Hunter, foremost of those surgeons and a true scientist, cut the Irish giant into chunks and boiled him in a great copper kettle. Water plumping, he kept the Irish giant bubbling and simmering for days, fat skimmed off the top, prepared the skeleton to hang in his own famous museum. Disappointingly, the hung frame, the articulated bones, measured in at only seven feet and seven inches, not the eight feet four the Irish giant and his manager had fraudulently claimed. And furthermore, he wasn't the last of his kind. There was the other Irish giant and the gigantic twin brothers, also natives of Ireland. Still, his skeleton was a popular exhibit in the Hunterian and remains there an impressive sight even to this day.